Hi everyone, in this session we are going to understand the demand curve for labour. Now before we move on any further, it's so important throughout this labour economics unit that you remember that the demand for labour is a derived demand. The demand for labour comes from the firm and is derived from consumers' demand for the product or service. Okay, so that's a really, really important point throughout this labour economics. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, how we derive the demand curve in economics, and this is through the marginal revenue product. Okay, marginal revenue product is very simply calculated via the additional revenue earned from employing an extra worker. So to actually get this calculation, get a numerical amount, you need to uh, be clear on what the marginal product is, i.e. the additional output generated by one more worker, times the actual price of the product. Okay, it's a very simple calculation, uh, and uh, yeah, it's really not gonna pose any problems as we'll see in this table. Okay, so in this table you can see that uh, I've put down a number of labourers here going from 1 through to 6, total product through from 8 through to 68 here, and then we've got a price uh, which is rain remaining cons constant at £10, okay? So this uh, good is clearly in a perfectly competitive market. Um, how do we know that? Well, we know that because it's a perfectly elastic or horizontal demand curve facing the firm, and therefore the price for the firm does not change. It remains constant at £10. So let's just have a look at working out our marginal product here uh, before we move on. So as we go from 0 to 1, that would mean our total product would go from 0 to 8. So therefore, the marginal product of that first worker would be 8. Our next one, we go from uh, 1 to 2 labourers, 8 to 22. So that is, of course, an additional product provided uh, in output uh, by that second worker of 14. And then our next one, of course, would be 18 from 22 to 40. 40 to 52 would be 12. 52 to 62 10 and finally we'd finish off with six okay um, so there's uh, some important things to be aware of here and that is that as we uh, reach this third worker we can see that we're actually um, seeing diminishing marginal returns taking place so diminishing marginal returns ie that the additional output provided by each extra worker starts falling after this third worker is employed. Okay, so as we move on to the fourth, it's gone down to 12, then 10, then six. So that's diminishing marginal returns in action there. Uh, okay, our next point is that, uh, yeah, of course, we've got this price of 10 pounds. So if we just come back to our calculation, we can now work out our marginal revenue product by the marginal product, eight times the price, 10 okay so very simply we can see that this would be 80 this one would be 140 uh, and then we would have 180 then 120 100 and finally just 60 okay uh, so we can see that third worker is helping to really increase output of those three staff that were employed then and his or her additional marginal product really does mean that that third worker is well worth their money uh, and we'll test that in just a second. Okay so before we go any further let's just pause then and consider how this would actually look as our demand curve for labour. Well firstly we can see that for our first member of staff, there's a level of demand of £80. Here we've got pounds and we've got employment on our axes. Okay, so if I just highlight that there, the next one we go up to 140. Uh, our next, our third worker, we go up to 180. Uh, our fourth one, we would go to 120. Then our fifth worker down to 100. Um, and then finally our sixth worker at just £60. Okay, so therefore we can see that this MRP curve looks something like that. Okay, so it looks something along those lines. Let's just tidy up that bit there and 
and yeah runs through like so okay fine so this is our MRP curve now um, let's just take this a step further though by considering the actual marginal cost of labour and we can see the marginal cost of labour is £100 throughout so it's a perfectly competitive labour market because the, the price of each labourer to the firm is £100 and that does not change so we can see that is therefore the, the case here, uh, here, um, here and so on, okay, to the extent that we can actually just draw a line representing our marginal cost of labor, okay? Um, so what's, what's really notable about this is where this marginal revenue is in excess of uh, the marginal cost of labor. So we can see that uh, with our fifth worker, our fifth worker right here, that is where um, we would reach a hundred and a um, hundred. Okay, so the marginal cost is a hundred, the marginal revenue product is a hundred. Okay, so we can just see in these bits here, the marginal revenue is greater than the marginal cost. So to understand this, we, we can therefore relate back to what we've seen in business economics and we can see that at this point marginal revenue product equals the marginal cost of labor so this would be the level of labor that the firm would actually want to employ why is that well it maximizes all of this area where marginal revenue product is greater than the actual marginal cost of labor okay so it means that they've maximized all of that area. So that's our profit maximizing assumption, of course. Marginal cost, marginal revenue equals marginal cost, okay? Uh, and we can just calculate that, uh, that contribution, that marginal contribution that each additional worker is actually providing over here, okay? And we can see that uh, 80, uh, revenue of 80, with a cost of 100 would lead to a loss of just minus 20, uh, sorry, of minus 20 pounds if you just employed one laborer, so the firm would make a loss. The next one, we go up to 140 minus 100 uh, is 40. 180 minus 100 would be 80. 120, well, that would be 20, and then zero, and then minus 40. Okay, so coming down here, you can see that at that point, then we would have a significant difference between the marginal cost, which is greater than the marginal revenue. Okay, fine. Um, so that's, that's a really, really important element. And this would determine that that is our ideal level of employment for the firm because it enables them to actually maximize all of that area where marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost. Okay, so a couple of things to uh, note about this because this marginal revenue curve then becomes our demand curve as uh, I've mentioned. Why is that? Well, it's because the firm is so attached to actually ensuring that the revenue earned by that employee is in excess of its marginal cost, okay? Um, so therefore, this is our demand curve for labor, and we can see that actually, they would employ five laborers at a cost of 100 pounds, okay? Um, so now, how do we know that this marginal revenue product curve is downward sloping? Well, there's, there's a couple of key elements to this okay and the first is that we can see an inverse relationship and that inverse relationship is between price okay on one hand and um, the quantity of labor okay so the quantity demanded now we've seen this before in relation to normal goods markets okay where if the price goes up the demand goes down it's exactly the same for a firm thinking about employing workers. Okay, if the price is high, they'll want to employ less workers. It stands to reason, really. Our second point is that we've also seen diminishing marginal returns. So that is that 
these returns on each employee diminish over time. Um, and as you employ more and more people, they become less and less productive. Okay, and we see that taking place. Final point is that in the long run, as opposed to in the short run, all factors of production uh, are variable. Okay, so you can change uh, all of your available factors and therefore firms can substitute labor for capital. Now that's a more sophisticated point and a very impressive point to actually make should you get an essay about uh, labor economics, okay? That in the longer term, firms will want to actually substitute labor for capital goods, okay? Because they're more affordable. You see this in supermarkets with self-serve uh, tills and so on. Okay, all right, that's it.